Hershey. Without any experience in manufacturing or fashion design or even starting a business, Sarah Blakely started Spanx at the age of 27. By the time she was 42, she was worth a billion dollars. It wasn't those skills that she needed. The skill that she had the most time developing was the most important skill for her success. And it was taught to her by her father who came home every day and asked this one question. How did you fail today? Oh, I could see on your faces the little knot in the back of your neck just say, fail? I'm not supposed to fail. I'm supposed to do what I'm told, get study, get straight A's, and just stay on a regular path. And nothing can be further from the truth. For life is full of failures, and you should look for the opportunities to fail. Now, we're not talking about showing up unprepared. That's a waste of time. It would, if I did that today, and I came here without being prepared, it would have been a waste of your time, my reputation, and I, worse yet, I would have embarrassed my niece and my nephew. The success that I'm talking about is based upon trying something different, expanding and just doing something a little different. It may fail, but the willingness to try is what's going to get you to success. Unfortunately, this comes from the old Greek mythology of Icarus, who was banished to the Isle of Creek with his father. But to escape, his father made these beautiful wings and attached them with wax. His father told him, don't fly too close to the sun for that will melt the wax and you will surely die. And by this picture, that actually was his fate. But unfortunately, that philosophy, which is constantly instilled in us, teaches us to put blinders on, that we only see what's right in front of us when there's a whole wider world to see. And one of the basic concepts for engineering your success is the realization of the truth, that what you see is all there is. That is your reality. And if you keep with those blinders, what you see is all there is, is gonna be very small. Because in reality, it is much, much larger. You have so much more opportunities that are just passing you by because you're working with those blinders. Leaders know that they need to continually expand what they know in order to seize opportunities. Now, what you know now, and I picked a bright star because you are future leaders of America, look at how small that is in comparison to what is out there. Sure, you'll go to college, but that's only going to be that much more. Look at how much more that's out there. And as I said, leaders know that what they see is not all there is. And we'll go and explore and try different things. You don't do it because of something that's based in the back of your neck. Now, it has some medical term, but for now, we're just going to call it the lizard brain. And just like lizards, it's going to constantly go and, and stay away and hide a fear. And anytime you're going to go and do something that's not comfortable, he will rise and say, no, 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 don't do that. And unfortunately, that's reinforced by the people around us. Because what they see is all there is. That's their reality. And if you do something that challenges them, they're going to come out in, in droves as naysayers go. When I wrote the first of my nine books... My own brother was kind of constantly saying, you, what are you going to do that for? You're going to just fail and just try to diminish me. Because writing a book wasn't in his reality. His blinders didn't even say it. And if it wasn't in his, it had to be a failure. People rain on your parade because they don't have a parade of their own. And it's because of the early on days is that if you went away from the pack, you could be the breakfast of a saber-toothed tiger. But the saber-toothed tiger is extinct, so you can take more chances. But there are modern-day saber-toothed tigers, bullies, those that are malicious, alcohol, drugs, texting while driving. Those are today's saber-toothed tigers. And you will recognize them when you widen what you see is all there is. You know that they are trying to destroy your success. That is their goal, is to destroy you. So the more you know about them, you will stay away from them.
because you will succeed. See, there's a second part to the story of Icarus that even Wikipedia just recently updated a couple of months ago. And that was, don't fly too low, for the waves of the ocean will surely take you. They don't tell you that because when I grew up, it was during the age of the industrial, it was during the industrial age of education, where they taught you to follow in line. They told you to just stay on a single path and just act almost like a factory worker on a factory line. And that is not going to get you as successful as you can be. But it takes commitment. It takes you to commit to having the right attitude of, yes, I'm going to try it even if I fail. The internet has so much information that you have the opportunity for free to find some of these great people to follow. Jeffrey Gittimer is one of the several that I'll mention here that are part of my virtual mastermind group. I read them constantly to get ideas, to think differently, to expand what I see is all there is. Jeffrey Gittimer built upon the positive attitude, but who goes to a game or has success and goes, positive? No, they go, yes. And he, being a trainer of sales, says, great, I did not make that sale? Fine, you know someone else? Because I need five more people to say no before I get to a yes. That's the power that you need to get. The willingness to try something even though it may fail. It takes 10,000 hours to get good at something. You're going to start now. You're going to go and pick maybe a career that you're going to go to. It doesn't matter so much what you pick as long as you're interested in it. Because when I was in school, I learned a programming language that doesn't exist today. In fact, my new career, I think I counted about 10 different careers, it wasn't even around five years ago. Things change, but that doesn't mean the stuff I learned early on and I built upon my knowledge helped me pick up the new stuff faster. And it helped me make change when I was observant enough to see what else was changing. Because I expanded what I see is all there is. I know that my reality isn't everything, so I'm constantly curious. Seth Godin, the head of marketing, I read him every single day. And he has this thing is that today you're not paid for your skills. You can literally get someone in a third world country to do a task that will feed his family but would only buy you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. That the only thing people talk about are things that are different, that things that are remarkable. The story he uses is, let's say if you're here and you're going out to Penn State to check out that school. You see cow cows, cow herds all over the place. Oh, boring. But if you saw a purple one, you would stop the car, take your iPhone, take a photograph, put it on Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat, and then share it on Facebook and Twitter. Because it's something remarkable. It's something to talk about. It's different. That is why you need to step away from the herd. But it means you got to quiet that little lizard brain that's in the back of your head. You can't do it alone. You're going to have to find the right people. You're going to have to stay away from the saber-toothed tigers and the naysayers. Start today finding the right people because success breeds success. You're going to look for people where they, that you believe in their vision and you're going to want to be part of it, that you're going to take your skills to watch their back. All of the businesses I started, I never start without talking to a lawyer and an accountant who warned me of the little, little things. They believe in me by using their skills to watch my back. Something that might get me in trouble with the IRS or something that might be illegal, they will protect my back. I do the same for others. I do it for clients. I will sit there and say, look, this is what's going to get you the most sales. This is what's going to help you get noticed. Say it this way, because I'm using my skills because I believe in what they do. I don't work for clients unless I believe in what they're trying to do. These are the tribes and you need to start forming them today. So let me summarize the commitment to engineering your success. Of course, you need the yes attitude that you can do it. You need to be observant because all successful leaders know 
what they see is not all there is. But you need to expand so that you actually get to see more and more of the universe. And what you're going to do is you're going to see something over there that's going to interest you and you're going to go over to it and say, I'm curious about this and check it out. Say, hmm, will this, and you're going to fail doing it at many times. Some things don't work out, some things do. Some of my businesses lasted many, many years, some didn't. You have to be curious and because without curiosity, you don't get passion. And without passion, you're not going to put in the 10,000 hours to get there. And you need to be willing to quiet that lizard brain and step a little bit away from the herd so that you are noticed and you are remarkable about. But you can't do it alone. You have to find the right people and support the right people to make you successful. But the most important thing to commit to success is the willingness to fail and fail often and you will win. Let me end with asking you this one basic question. Parents, support your kids. Don't poo-poo an idea. Let them check it out and fail on their own and be there when they have to pick up. Commit yourself to engineering success. Thank you.